Shield Hero, let's do it. We're gonna be breaking down exactly where it's nice, where it deserves to be canceled, and where it's shit. And also, we're gonna be making fun of Malty because she is the worst female character in the history of fiction. Now in the library, college student Naofumi Iwatami finds a fantasy book about four heroes. What a regular the guy. Spear, sword, bow, and shield. Damn. When I heard these classes, I was like, all right, all right. Uh, so, spear, sword, bow, and shield. One of these four is not like the others. One of these four is the cuck beta bottom weapon. It is the weapon that people in history that have used this weapon have been shit on. That is correct. The spear. No, I'm kidding. The, the shield. Bro, one guy has a bow, a spear, a sword, and a shield. Dude, a shield. What a lame, freaking, stupid, boring ass garbage weapon. What are you going to do with a shield? Guess what the main character gets. Naofumi is some. They even made. Look how they made him crouched, bro. This is not a coincidence. Heroes. They knew the spear, exactly what sword, they were bow, doing. And shield. All right, look, look at these four guys. All right, sword guy in an epic pose. She spear guy, epic pose, about to stab some shit. Bow guy, epic pose, about to take the. This dude is kneeling. He is at cock to mouth level. Man is here, ready to suck. Okay, sorry. I'm in a bad mood because YouTube freaking muted the audio of my sniper wolf video. I'm just so freaking mad. Naofumi is summoned to another universe with three others to save mankind from the waves. A series the of chaotic invasions. <laughs> the waves, bro. He, they got summoned to plants versus zombies, and they must defeat the waves. When partners are assigned, nobody joins shield hero Naofumi, believing him to be the weakest of the four. However, mine, a member- uh, They believed that shield guy was the weakest of the four? That's crazy. Shield guy- Sorry for being overly petty at YouTube. It's just they 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 deserve it. Why why can't people just try to like cancel me? I saw a tweet with fifty thousand likes on it saying that uh, that that uh, they hate my design. Fifty thousand likes. There is an entire ecosystem of people feeding on my dis downfall on Twitter. And those guys are kind of funny. Honestly, they make me happy, not gonna lie. I, I left, I've been off Twitter lately, but when I went on Twitter for like a day to make one tweet, I saw that and I was just laughing. Like, bro, dude, you're just proving that my success is based on my personality if you say that my design is shit. Sorry, gamers. <laughs> Sorry, gamers. That was a compliment. Member of the Spear Heroes party offers to join Naofumi to help him train. A woman wants to join the main character to help him train? This can't possibly go wrong. You know why? Because I respect women so much. So much, in fact, that my sniper wolf video making fun of her had nothing to do with sexism at all. I am the least misogynistic sniper wolf hater. <laughs> Soon afterwards, Mine steals God, his belongings and accuses him. Now Fumi's denials are ignored. Whoa! Did you hear that? Did you hear the audio cup? Wait, what? Soon afterwards, Mine steals his belongings and accuses him. Now Fumi's. They cut out the. and accuses him of raping her. Denials are ignored by all, and he becomes an outcast. Oh my god, this man got twittered. When I first watched this episode, I was like, holy shit, I could think of 10 YouTubers that went through the same thing. Kindness only by Erhard, the weaponsmith who realizes he's innocent. Embittered and enraged, Naofumi begins scrounging for materials and learns how to upgrade his shield with resources he finds in the world. After fighting very convenient away some thugs who wanted to rob him, he realizes he can't upgrade without experience or strength. Approached by- It's kind of hilarious to be honest that, uh, so, so he already covered the entire first episode. Uh, pretty much. Like, that's very impressive how quickly he actually recapped it. I guess he wanted to cut out as much of that rape stuff as possible so he wouldn't get demonetized. I respect it. But a uh, random slave trader jump scare. But the point is, in, in the first episode of this anime, when this happened, I actually thought it was relatively interesting social commentary. I like dark isekai, because isekai are normally supposed to be this incredibly upbeat, Trapped in another world, get a harem, fight the demon lord, life is awesome, escapism. And this is like the anti-escapist anime. This this pulls you into a world where he's immediately shunned and accused by being blamed of the most horrible act someone could commit. Um, and I thought that that was a very interesting way of looking at things. A way of looking how uh, the disgusting and vile pieces of shit on Twitter that do this sort of thing... That same type of person exists even in this fantasy world. So this is just a much darker look at it. Now, 
My issue is with the resolution. The fact that he decides to become the 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 edgelord villain, basically, because of it, instead of work on, you know, um, main, you know, fixing his reputation. I thought that whole arc was a little, was a little wild. My slave trader Belokus, now Fumi is brought to a slave market. Slave market! Woo! Now it's an isekai. Until here I was like, bro, this is so dark. It, 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 this is crazy. I can't believe it. And then, oh, slave market. We're, we're back. We are back on the rails. Uh, this, in my opinion, this is where the anime peaked. <laughs> right before the slave market was where this anime peaked. Uh, I do think it's kind of downhill from here. Uh, I really feel like the entire Shield Hero story was really reliant on that initial twist of really, really good actual meta commentary on mo the most heinous act someone could do, you know? Or the second most heinous. I guess raping is the most heinous, and second most heinous is falsely accusing of that, right? Like, uh, and then at this point, they, they're kind of still just turning their wheels and spinning their shit at this point. So, uh... I really hate to be that negative fellow that while I do think that the premise and meta commentary until here was good, I do think it gets a little bad at this point. I feel like they're really just trying to keep that premise alive and that outcast vibe, and it's relatively unfortunate. Uh, but that said and done, can we get a shout out for slave traders and isekai anime, probably the most booming businessmen of that era? They're like the crypto bros of isekai. <laughs> I just compared crypto bros to slave trading. Yep, yep. Positive headspace, Nuxinor. Really taking W's today. So a slave may gain XP and fight for him. In the corner of the room, now Fumi finds a demi-human slave girl cowering in a cage. While Belokus offers Naofumi a high-level wolfman, Naofumi instead buys the much cheaper Tanuki girl. I wonder why! Mm -hmm. Why did he pick the cute slave girl? instead of picking the really strong wolf man. Oh, it must be the price. That's probably why. Raftalia. Yeah, Placing yeah, a slave yeah. crest on her prevents Raftalia from betraying or disobeying Naofumi without- Holy shit, I totally forgot about the slave crest shit. Oh, this anime gets so wild and so raunchy. Feeling intense pain, while also linking shared experience gained by one to the other. Raftalia's reoccurring nightmares of her parents' death in the first wave have deeply scarred her, yep, making her sense. initially hesitant to kill. I will be honest, she is cute. Uh, she's a really cute character for the first, like, few episodes. Um, so while I said that after the first episode with the whole accusation shit, Slave Trader comes in, that was the beginning of the fall. We are still close to the peak, even though we are in the decline. Um, when future Hara members get introduced, that's when the anime just gets, gets wild. I don't know. Both leave the capital Raftalia for the is just so, like, innocent and childlike, and it's so sad that she had to go through what she did. And you can start to see the real darkness in this world, and, um, you know. ...small town of loot for a mine to collect valuable ore, but they're attacked by a high-level dog horse. monster that wounds Naofumi, the same beast type which killed her parents. The monster's appearance sends Raftali into shock. Seeing her fear, Naofumi tells her to escape while he buys time. What?! It's escape?! But, but you're my master! What? Confronting her feelings of regret Let's and helplessness, go. Raftalia summons up the courage to kill the beast. So, here you'll notice soon my major complaint when it comes to this anime, and it's not the themes. When people shit on Shield Hero, because I see a lot of people shitting on Shield Hero, uh, a lot of people make fun of it because they say, the, It's a slave trader, false rape allegations, this show is just not kosher, homie. And while I agree there is slight lack of being kosher in this show i would like to say that my major complaint with this show is i feel like every character's arc kind of concludes after one episode and then you're just dragged along with this character like for example raftalia was scarred when she was a child and she didn't trust this dude who is now her slave owner right for obvious reasons in one episode the dude proves that i value your life escape without me she overcomes her ptsd and defeats the beast guy her character arc has ended do you see what I'm trying to say here? Like, my complaint with Shield Hero isn't the dark, gritty themes. It's the fact that it just, every character's arc just concludes early, and we're just kept strung along by these characters. Now Fumi confronts Raftalia, promising not to leave her, and she agrees to help him defeat the waves Very so awesome. other children won't suffer as she has. Awesome. Later at dinner time, now Fumi decorates a toothpick flag to make the flag of Japan, a sign of his. <laughs> what 
an intricate flag he is designed. I'm sorry. His intent to someday return home. After a month of leveling up in preparation for the next wave, Naofumi unlocks a huge variety of transformations Let's for his shield, go. each with a unique ability, while Raftalia rapidly matures into a young adult woman. To <laughs> uh, rapidly matures into a young yet adult woman. Raftalia enthusiast punching the air right now. Determine the time remaining until the next wave, Naofumi and Raftalia visit the capital's cathedral and its dragon hourglass which measures the time between waves. Yeah, Much to his chagrin, cool. they also meet the other three heroes, who still scorn him and view him as a liability. Well, a liability, because A, man's power is a shield, <laughs> and uh, B, liability, because dude was, they still believe that he's, uh, you know, at least some of them believe it at this point, that he is a rapist, you know? Horrible dude. Like, I almost can't blame them. Raftalia wonders why the other heroes despise Naofumi, but he refuses to tell her. The next day, the wave begins. Yeah, like, I, I, I get that also, honestly. That, that is decent writing. Like, no one wants to share that shit. Could you imagine someone gets, like... So, there are cases on YouTube where someone will get falsely accused of some sort of sexual misconduct, okay? And the YouTuber gets super shunned and mega canceled. And even once the YouTuber responds and gets back on his two feet and proves his innocence, um, there are still going to be people that want to stay away from them just because they have that looming name over their head of someone that has been accused of something bad. So no one wants to bring this shit up. No one wants to be there. Like, it's crazy. You can be accused of even the most minor shit and be completely proven innocent, and still there are people that aren't going to want to associate with you just because you are of the accused. It's a really, really sad society. While the other heroes and their allies rush to defeat the main force, Naofumi and Raftalia head to loot to help evacuate the civilians. Some knights arrive to help, but initially disregard Naofumi's orders. Though when they realize he's trying to protect the villagers, some choose to aid him. The others leave to join right, the other- So then the rest of the season just really focuses on Naofumi repairing the reputation that was destroyed in the very first second. Heroes, who defeat the main boss and end the wave. After the battle, the villagers thank Naofumi for his help. The hourglass resets, starting the countdown for the next wave. After repelling the wave of catastrophe, Let's the go! heroes are treated to a state dinner, which Naofumi reluctantly attends. Mine informs Motoyasu that Raftalia is a slave prompting him to challenge Naofumi to a duel for her freedom. Despite wow, look at this dude. Look at this white knight over here. He comes into another society. He has some random lying filthy bitch. God damn freaking whispering in his ear. He's going to walk into another society with rules that he doesn't understand. And he is going to confront someone based on his own internal white knight moral compass. The most pompous man alive. I cannot stand shield hero. My God, not shield hero, spear hero specifically. This man, this man might be, okay, he's not worse than Malty, but God damn. Now Fumi declining the challenge, King Altcray Melromark takes Raftalia, forcing the duel. Despite why would he do that though but why this is like a completely accepted practice in this world bro but yasu's higher level now fumi's many shields and superior tactics give him the upper hand yeah, it, but, it, it does make for a really cool fight i'm not gonna lie it's a really cool fight but mine openly uses wind magic the trip up now fumi letting moto yasu claim victory when Alt Kray reveals mine is his daughter, Malti, now when we realize his they- Well, 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 doesn't that explain a lot? The king hates the guy because his daughter is the fake accusing bitch character. Now, what's so ironic is this about this show is that, yes, you have all these demon waves and stuff. Yes, you have all the reputation that you need, well, you want him to fix. You don't care about any of that. The only thing I think the entire fan base, literally, the entire fan base came together to agree upon was the fact that we want to see this goddamn lying fucking bitch annihilated. We want to see her humiliated and prove that she was lying to restore the world and realm's faith in S.H.I.E.L.D. hero. That is the ultimate goal of anyone watching this show. And every episode that doesn't directly focus on getting, either hating her more or taking her down is just not something we want to see, which ironically is not necessarily the greatest plot structure for an isekai because she's not really around all that much. He planned his defamation. With Raftalia's slave seal removed, Naofumi's burning hatred within him unlocks the Cursed series. 
However, Raptalia slaps Motoyasu, condemning him for his false shibboleth. Yeah! Yeah! And positing Kick that if butt. he truly wanted to free slaves, he'd have some freed men in his party. Which is so based. The fact that this spear hero guy went up against shield hero because he knew shield hero was hated by everyone. It's like the whole cancel cult. This show is basically just cancel culture. It's it's medieval fantasy cancel culture. And the fact that he went after Shield Heroes because he knew it was an e he was an easy target because everyone else on Twitter was was shitting on Shield Hero at the same time. So this dude was like, oh hell yeah, I can really farm for some likes now when I poop on Shield Hero. So that's why he goes after him. And Spear Hero doesn't care. Why isn't Spear Hero going to free slaves? Specifically, just his slave who he's treating well. That's the only one. It's obviously personal to get Twitter points. This whole show is just... I think maybe maybe that's the reason why it rubbed me the wrong way after the first episode. It's just brain-dead Twitter discourse in a nutshell. Entering the arena, Ren and Nitsuki openly condemn Mind's interference. Incensed, all Kray would allow such blatant cheating. Raptalia returns to Naofumi's side, reaffirming her loyalty to him, Aww. and the cursed series subsides. The next morning, Naofumi eats a breakfast sandwich Raptalia made him, sandwich! finding that he can finally God, I'm so hungry. taste food again. His confidence and hope renewed, Naofumi is now assured that Raptalia is truly his ally. In another land of diplomatic travel, Queen Morelia Q. Melremark learns of the- That is a name and a half, holy crap. Pool at the castle. At Belluk's tent, Raftali asks for a new slave seal as a show of- I totally forgot this happened. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I don't, I don't like that. Like, listen, you are free, okay? You don't- Oh, man. Why? Why? Listen. While I'm, I like shitting on Spear Hero for being all white nighty and freeing her because she's whatever, a slave and slavery is wrong, I agree with him that slavery is wrong. He should have just, you know, actually focused on the slaves that were being mistreated first, I would think, instead of being petty and farming Twitter likes by shitting on Shield Hero. Now, this is stupid, okay? This is cringe, bro. That said, slavery bad is still a very base take. <laughs> <laughs> she went back to get the slave mark put back. What the fuck is the moral of this story? What is the moral here? Oh my Good God. faith to Naofumi. While Naofumi buys a gotcha monster egg, which later hatches into a filolio. Naming filolio. her Philo, she immediately imprints on Naofumi, reaching adulthood in a few days due to a skill of his. Visiting Loot Village, Naofumi is shocked by Motoyasu in mind, declaring the village to be under Motoyasu's rule by royal decree. That's sucks. Naofumi, aware of the town's money limitations, attempts to block the heavy taxes Mind plans to levy. But Morelia's envoys arrive to deliver a message to Mine. God, I Disturbed hate with the contents, she challenges Naofumi to a race to possess the village. Dude, Naofumi I love how everyone's just challenging Naofumi because they know that he's just universally hated. It's it's going up against. It's like, for example, me making a video shitting on Sniper Wolf. No one is going to say that I am so brave for that incredible take. Now, maybe I'm brave because I am doing this while she might just show up to my house. Maybe that's brave, but no one's going to think that it's brave of me to make that take. Umi joins when Philo comically kicks Motoyasu into the air and rides her against Motoyasu's dragon. The soldiers use magic to cheat in Motoyasu's favor. No way! Not... The same exact thing that happened in the previous episode is happening again? Wow. Sorry, I just hate redundant plot lines. Fumi still wins, forcing Malti to relent when Morelia's envoys expose her cheating. On the way back from loot, now Fumi and Raftalia stop to rest. The next day, they're surprised oh, to find- Oh, baby! Who would have thought that the chicken became a girl and now Raftalia, 10 year old by the way, is all jealous that the chicken girl is also part of the harem. Yeah, th this is when the show fully fell off for me. I think uh, I think this is kind of where the show uh, really, really hit its, its downward stride. Philo transformed into a little girl with wings. Now Fumi brings Philo to Erhard, the weaponsmith, who sends them to the dressmaker, who in turn sends them to the magic shop owner to make the magic clothes for Philo. However, the magic shop owner needs a new magic gemstone for her loom, vital to make the magic threat. <laughs> the magic armory sent me to the magic bakery, which sent me to the magic Philo to get me the magic a pretty textbook fetch quest. Escorting a wealthy trader who will help his party, a bandit group attacks his wagon and are defeated. When they float, they'll go unpunished due to Naofumi's defamation. He extorts them into giving him all their loot, or a Philo will eat them. Impressing Based. the trader, Naofumi- Based! 
based use your terrible reputation to your advantage that's what i always say if they're gonna cancel me for making rule 34 references i'm just gonna put boobs on more thumbnails people twitter has not liked me lately and to them i say cool he learns new skills and is introduced to new contacts even gaining a warrant to mine a quarry at a discount as now hey, Fumi's party and the magic which is shop cute. you know like he's slowly but surely rebuilding his reputation just by being a basic decent guy boner search for a magic gemstone boner. they find an abandoned alchemist tomb housing a cursed seed but find the cursed seed is missing after fighting creatures through the tunnels they locate a gem vein where a new a has made its nest in after they kill the beast and obtain the gemstone Let the magic go. shop owner helps philo make the magic Let thread go. which in turn lets the dressmaker make philo a dress that transforms with her body tasked by the trader to deliver Incredibly herbicide to based. a village now fumi's party discover the village overrun by a monstrous plant they learn that the seed from the tomb is what the spear hero motoyasu used to end a local famine but the sprouted plant guess the spear hero actually is a super good guy came alive and began attacking the villagers <laughs> spear literally can't do anything right like i get the concept that spear hero is kind of an arrogant bitch right this guy's going around he's trying to get clout in cheap ways he's trying yes he probably saved the famine in order to get clout for saving the famine but you didn't have to make him fail miserably at everything like that i mean it was called the cursed seed right with motoyasu gone they turn to naofumi who defeats the monster plant and alters the seeds to be safe with the villagers unable to pay him for the seeds he takes them to the trader for sale who gives him a job to deliver merchandise to a hot springs village staying the night raftali is dude everything that that was just said basically in this entire st <laughs> like this could be in any isekai there is nothing that makes these like random quests stand out that is shield hero at all jealous of now a shield hero is just like your your average old isekai plot except they slap on twitter hijinks which i mean is a decent meta commentary i would say that shield hero is like a 6 out of 10 anime you know it's not average it's a little more than that me and philo spending time together but learns of a special gem a local bird collects raftali adventures off to get the gem for now fumi but she's joined by philo who wants the bird eggs on the way, a silver boar attacks and chases them to the nest, knocking the Let's jewels go. off the cliff and trampling over the eggs. No! Enraged, the two kill- The two women are useless without their men! Oh! <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean to- But and sell the body, taking the proceeds to buy a special tool, which they give to Naofumi to use in his gem work. Learning of a mysterious disease spreading through a village, Naofumi's party goes to investigate and finds out that the disease began after sword hero Ren killed a dragon nearby. Are you noticing the trend here? Every village that they go to is suffering from something that some random guy that's one of the shield hero or spe one of either spear hero or sword hero or whatever, they did something that, that seems positive and they got cloud points for it, but there was also incredible... <laughs> incredible repercussions to their actions that are just randomly killing off some village and shield heroes just going around from village to village that is getting uber fucked by some random shit that one of the other heroes did and and he's fixing his reputation like that it's it's just it's just so corny it's so corny and left the body to rot instead of properly disposing of it monsters had gathered around its corpse and the decomposing body rendered the entire area toxic now Fumi's party sent out for the corpse, which resurrects into a zombie dragon. During their fight, the dragon swallows- So Hilo. basically, Sword Hero did nothing! He killed the dragon, which poisoned the village, and then the dragon just wakes back up! Nicely done, Sword Hero. You fucking legend. Was ...seemingly killing her, which triggers Now Fumi's despair and rage to activate his cursed rage shield. Now Fumi repels yes, the dragon's attack- because nothing- no isekai protagonist would be right here- in an isekai story if they didn't have a random bullshit hex overpowered power and uh we have one here too you'll notice more and more that shield hero just devolves after that first episode of just interesting meta commentary on society interesting I interesting in air quotes but at least meta commentary to some degree and the rest of the story is just basic isekai like under that paint job which is unfortunate with strong defense and passive flames at the cost of losing his composure. When Naofumi recovers, he realizes Raftalia was burned, trying to bring him to his senses. To their surprise, Philo bursts out of the dragon's belly, having eaten the internal crystal empowering it. 
Philo finds another crystal and gives it to Naofumi, but his level isn't high enough to use the shield it unlocks. Back at the village, Naofumi learns Raftalia's wounds from the cursed shield can only be cured with high-grade holy water. Alright, on to the next quest to get that. Dude, I just want to see Malty getting fucking taken down a peg! <laughs> Oh my god, dude, can you just go redo of healer for five minutes, please? And regrets have- Okay, actually, I, I'm not condoning redo of healer. Let me just make it clear. Redo of healer is not based. And put his companions in trouble. But... Determined to make himself and his party stronger. Now Fumi's party heads to the capital for holy water to heal Raftalia and comes across a blue-haired girl named Melty with some- Yes! Yes! Dude, why are all the girls in this show chill? I'm just realizing right now, aside from Malty, all the women are children. Like, man literally just gets a harem of children. My god. Lolioles. Melty quickly befriends Philo, who brings Melty to Naofumi, asking to accompany them to the capital. Once there, Philo and Melty go their own ways as Naofumi and Raftalia go to the church. The clergy attempt to scam Naofumi with their lowest quality holy water. Wow, But cringe. the Pope quarterly grants Naofumi high grade, pure holy water, Basically. when the hero points out the issue. In the town square, Motoyasu attacks Naofumi, having learned about Philo. <laughs> this dude just, just shows up out of nowhere to, to just put his big stick on the table and make people look at it. Ending her freedom from being his slave. Unaware, Philo is Naofumi's filolial. Motoyasu starts attacking with reckless abandon as mine permits it. But Sure she does! Oh my god, can someone please just rip her ears off? Please. Melty arrives to order them to stop as Philo, remembering Motoyasu's insults, transforms and kicks him away. Yes, sir. Meeting at Erhard's shop, Melty explains to Naofumi's party that she is the second princess. That worked out incredibly nicely. That worked out so nicely. Wow, the random person that they met was the princess. What? Sorry, sorry. Who was made heiress apparent by Morelia due to her older sister Malti's toxic personality. Fucking Malti. Get the get her out of here, please. Before continue, now Fumi states his distrust towards the royal family and dismisses her. Dejected. What? What a freaking loser. Come on, Chia Lero guy, aren't you learning anything here? You should not judge books by their cover. That is literally what everyone's been doing to you! Why would you do this? He goes to her father to talk as now Fumi is met by a small party wishing to join after he saved Loot Village, their hometown. Now Fumi will only allow it if they pay 150 silver coins to prove their loyalty. As Rafta. <laughs> Man taking the tax, baby! Man taking the tax! Ali and Philo are Respect. ready for class upgrades, level cap increases, a royal decree forbids the Shield Heroes party from using Melromax Dragon Hourglass. On advice by Belokis, Naofumi plans to head for neighboring Shield Frieden for their hourglass, but the next wave will strike before they reach it. While scouting towns, Naofumi happens upon starving refugees who fled a revolution started by Itsuki. Returning- What?! Bow guy starts a revolution? I didn't remember that. That's hilarious. For the next wave, Naofumi encounters Ren and Itsuki, who accuse him of stealing their rewards. Dude, they are so, like, they are such pricks. Everyone just always walking up to freaking Naofumi. Oh, God. Like, I get it. You think he did something bad. That doesn't mean every bad thing in the world that happens is... is Naofumi explains Itsuki's revolution only put a new government just as corrupt as the old one. And yeah. Ren leaving these. You know That's just power vacuums in a nutshell. Dude is. So oh my god, dude. <laughs> I love these characters. Damn. Slain Dragon's corpse behind caused a plague. Ren sees Raftalian's wounds and believes him. But Itsuki remains adamant that Naofumi is lying. No, Later, now Fumi, one time he was accused by someone with no evidence and I believe her and therefore my entire worldview of you has forever changed and I will never take anything you say seriously. The mindset of 99% of Twitter. Erhard gives now Fumi upgraded armor and the loot party returns with 150 silver. <laughs> Bro, man, man pulled out his inner Andrew Tate and he said to them, if you want to join me, you have to pay me. What a legend, what an actual legend. Now Fumi has them buy better gear with the money, accepting Aww. them. The next wave is 24 hours away, equipping Raftali and Philo and annexing the loot party with Knight Ake as their captain. The wave starts and Ake's unit helps civilians as Naofumi's party Let's kills go. monsters. Hey. Seeing an elderly woman who Naofumi healed during his travel- God, I love old women! I mean, went like in, kung, in a kung fu way, not like in a that- 
I'm sorry. Defeat monsters, she reveals herself to be a retired adventurer. After three hours, Naofumi worries about the other hero's progress. So he leaves Ake's party with the elderly woman to protect the civilians. Finding the other hero parties haphazardly attacking a Dutchman, Naofumi chastises their inattention. Having wrapped up. There's a whole war going on wiping out the city and all the other heroes are busy focusing on some other thing. <laughs> Dude, why do you have to make them all so incompetent? Like, you could have made at least one of them competent, right? Like, please? You... Is it just me, or are incompetent villains more annoying than competent ones? Talia exposed the hidden boss, a massive soul eater. Now Fumi resorts to using his cursed shield, but the zombie dragon soul inhabiting the shield is furious for Ren killing it, and now Fumi incorporating it into his gear. The attempted takeover sends Naofumi and Philo into a fury against the Soul Eater, but Naofumi remembers his mission and regains control to Let's use a new go. power for the win, Iron Maiden. Victorious, Naofumi returns Which is, mind you, badass. Uh, let me just, let me just remind you that that is badass. The normal, but a second Soul Eater appears and is easily killed by a new enemy, Glass. A woman in a black- ah! Sorry, he said a woman, that was just, I was like, a new enemy! A woman! I was like, oh! Sorry, it just sent me there for a trip. No wielding twin bladed war fans. The true enemy of this wave. Glass easily defeats the other three hero parties and challenges now Fumi's party. <laughs> the other three hero parties are just freaking there. All right, Glass shows up, defeats the three heroes. Now it is her versus now Fumi. Okay. All right. Even against Naofumi's many shields with Raftali and Philo's support, they can't land a single blow. Calling for a tactical retreat, Glass attempts long-range attacks, but retreats when the wave's time limit hits, ending in a stalemate. That's a, that's a very convenient piece of plot, that the waves have time limits. Some of the aspects of the show are kind of corny. Like, I, I really wish they would have leaned into the more society character development stuff. After the battle, Naofumi ponders the wave's time limits and their true purpose when he's summoned back to the castle. alt Kray demands he reveal the- God, this king, dude! Can someone get him out of here? ...secret behind his abilities, but Naofumi demands alt Kray kneel and beg. <laughs> I remember that scene. That scene was fire. That scene was fire! It, it's like, he knows at this point, no amount of sucking up to the king is actually going to make the king just, you know, realize, you know, maybe I will forgive you for, and uh, I won't believe my own daughter's false rape accusation. That's not going to happen, all right? At this point, just be the asshole you think I am. This scene was fire. Enraged, Altkray attempts to extort Philo and Raftalia, but now Fumi threatens him with a worse outcome should he try. As he leaves, a woman covertly warns Naofumi ah! about the church conspiring. Sorry, he said a woman. I was just like, holy shit, just came out of nowhere. Firing against him. Naofumi and it's no an adult woman, so like, that's how you know that this show's really going crazy. Notes her outdated manner of speech. Malti attempts to convince her father to reconcile with Naofumi. But Malti exacerbates the situation. After Urhar God. Provides them with travel gear and supplies, Naofumi's party departs to shield Frieden for Raftalia and Philo's class-ups. While en route, they are met by Melty, who wants Naofumi Yay! to reconcile with Altkray. Naofumi senses something is wrong moments before one of Melty's bodyguards attempts to assassinate her. Oh my god! Dude! Get, right, I totally forgot about this also. Malty hired people to kill her own sister because she's just not evil enough. I would say to the streets, but the streets do not deserve her. But Naofumi protects her. Seeing Naofumi protect Melty, the attacking knights accuse him of taking her hostage. Fucking bitches, honestly. But are repelled. Naofumi finds the pendant on a guard of the Church of Three Heroes, which hates the shield. At the Royal Palace, wizard- The Church of the Three Heroes. They made a whole religion about hating this guy. <laughs> Dude, it's like, whenever I see people, like, in these entire hate communities on Twitter hating on me, I'm like, I realize, bro, I am important enough to these people that they made an entire religion around hating me. How awesome is that? How badass is that? Like, I never wanted to be a villain, but I will play that role if I must. <laughs> Let's edit the recording of Naofumi kidnapping Melty, making him a fugitive. Planning oh my god, dude, this is amazing. Like, I wish that they would really tack on more plot points than just, oh, turns out Malty lied about Shield Hero again. 
but it is going to definitely make it all the sweeter when she eventually tastes defeat. Planning to protect Melty to fix their situation, Naofumi's party hiked the mountains to reach nearby Siltveld. At night, a loose rock alerts nearby guards and the other three heroes. As Melty explains the situation, Malty orders they ignore her, claiming Naofumi has a brainwashing shield. Yes, totally, I believe her completely. Yes, yes. I, I, uh, who needs evidence of my own eyes? Who needs proof if if I could just simply uh uh believe this random woman with massive breasts? Despite lack of evidence, the heroes fall for this. Now. This is just Twitter. She's just like encapsulates that mob mentality on Twitter. It's crazy. This woman has never lived for, I believe, every part of her jiggling bosom. Fumi attempts to flee with Melty, but Motoyasu uses a magic shackle to stop Philo. After now, Fumi resorts power. to using his raid shield to escape, Itsuki and Ren begin to doubt mine when she openly attacks without regard for Melty's safety. Naofumi gives Ren the church pendant, calling for an investigation as he departs. One of Morelia's- <laughs> It- wait a second. So, it took- it took Malty releasing an attack that would murder her own sister for the other two heroes to be like, mm, Maybe uh, taking her word at face value the entire show it was actually not a good idea afterwards. Emissaries helps remove Philo's shackle and relays Marilia's desire to meet Naofumi. Naofumi realizes the emissary is Marilia is kind of awesome though. Like that, that she's a cool character. Same woman who warned him about the church. Naofumi, however, decides to keep heading for Siltveld since meeting Marilia would take them in the opposite direction. Meanwhile, mine sends a force. <laughs> They go out of their way to make her look as evil and cunning as possible when she's literally not cunning. She is like one of the least cunning villains of all time. She is just a Twitter user that dropped the first twit longer. <laughs> literally. She... <laughs> like, they could have at least made her like a smart villain. But they didn't. They just made her bad for no reason. Like, there was literally no reason for her to be this evil. Like, I feel like they're... She could have had some sort of evil plot going on, planning for some kind of domination where... But no! She's not cunning, she's just petty! <laughs> forest fire to flush Naofumi out. Sure. My and everyone's like, mm, yes, she's making a forest fire to flush out this one guy and she's gonna kill the entire habitat. Makes sense to me! Knights start a forest fire to force out Naofumi's party. Meanwhile, no one thinks that that's overkill. No one thinks that that's even slightly weird. Next morning, the border to Siltveld is closed by royal decree, leaving Naofumi no choice but to meet Morelia. As they travel, Melty knows nobleman Van Reichnot, who rules what a name, God damn. the area, and by surprise, they are met by him. Bringing them to his manor, Reichnot is informed of their situation and invites them to stay the night. Come dawn, Reichnot is arrested while the maids hide well, Naofumi and Raftalia in the kitchen pantry, tried. and Melty distracts the knights. Their leader, nobleman idol rape. Bro, look at this man, dude. When 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 he was character designing this dude, they were like, "All right, I ain't gonna make the most pompous looking asshole possible." Even the two little French mustache things. God damn. Beer arrives and escorts Melty to his manor. Seeing Raftalia's anxiety with Rabier, Nalfumi calms her to let Melty's plan work. Once Rabier leaves, Nalfumi finds Philo, and they make their way to Rabier's estate. Let's go. As demi-humans loyal to Reichnot besiege the gates for his release, Nalfumi uses this to infiltrate the castle, where Reichnot is tortured in front of Melty for Rabier's amusement. Now, <laughs> I love the bad guys in this show. The bad guys don't have like these grandiose plans. The bad guys are like, mm, I will torture you for my amusement. <laughs> Bro, couldn't you have made him have some sort of ideology? Something? Something? There is no character, no villain in this show has any form of ideology or even backstory that justifies what they do. They're just, ah, I will torture you. Why? I've done nothing wrong. Ha! <laughs> For my own amusement! Fumi manages to enter the manor and rescue Melty and Reichnot. Raftalia confronts Rabier. Dude, who look how fat he is. Manages to enter the manor and rescue Melty and Reichnot. Oh my god, Raft it's like Isekai villain Humpty Dumpty. Holy frick. His head is being swallowed by his shoulders. Look at this man. He has no neck. God damn. Talia confronts Rabier, who pitifully begs for mercy. No, please! Please! I, it is not my fault! It was the generations of incest that made my face this disformed that made me this twisted. 
In a flashback, Raftalia's home village is destroyed by the first wave. He's like Kingpin in Spider-Verse? How could you even say that? How could you even say he's like Kingpin from Spider-Verse? Kingpin had such good motives. His family was destroyed. He wanted to, at any cost, bring his family back by opening a multiverse. Like, there's something there, okay? There's something there. Kingpin was cool. This guy will torture you for my amusement. How could you compare him to Kingpin? And the villagers are enslaved by- Maybe he looks like Kingpin. All right, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Melbra Mark troops. She and her best friend, Rifana, are sold to Idol Rabier. Wow, what a coincidence that this backstory is coming in clutch right now. Damn, we're, we're totally not shoehorning this in right now for no reason at all, just to make us feel bad for her and hate this guy a little bit more. Raftalia ultimately- introduced this other- breaks as Rafana dies from illness, and Rabier sells her to Belokas, leading her to now- Of all, all the tragic backstories of her, it's like, all right, so another random stop on Raftalia's traumatizing journey. After her parents were killed, she was sold to this rich bastard that we happen to bump into right now. Fumi. Back in the present, remembering her past, Raftali is about to strike, when now Fumi reminds her of how- No, you are a better person. You are a- You are better than them! I love that, that speech. <laughs> you are better than them! Don't become the one you swore to destroy. I disagree. How much she's grown. Realizing killing Rabier would bring her no peace, she spares him. Insult- And that'll bring peace? Please. Please. Did Rabier fight- You know the best way to- <laughs> You know the best way to cure PTSD? Nice fucking gun in the back of the head of this asshole who tortured her for years. I'm just saying. To kill her. But using her mana sword, she wounds him. And he- I love how it's like, oh, now it's in self-defense, so it's totally okay. I am of the mindset, if someone breaks into your house, okay, listen, in a state with fortress law, okay, dude, castle doctrine, if you're in Texas and someone breaks into your house, shoot to kill. Don't shoot him in the leg so that he's wounded and he'll be fine. No, even if this ma wounded man gets arrested, imprisoned, and 20 years later comes out, he's gonna try to kill you now, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. End the bloodline. He falls back out of a window. Helping Ragnar- And he's dead as fuck. Raftalia guides yeah, them to the underground yeah. prison. so you killed him anyway. Except now you can feel good about yourself that it was in self-defense. Then, finding demi-human survivors, including her old friend Kiel. Raftalia what? breaks down upon I finding thought you were dead. remains. Left in the cell to rot, believing she abandoned yeah. her. To restore her spirits, Naofumi admits that he finally started to trust again because of her, and how she Aww. saved him from darkness. Ah. Reassured, Raftalia promises to go home someday to rebuild and give Rafana a proper burial. In the courtyard, a still-living Rabier frees a sealed-away ancient Tyrannosaurus-like dragon monster. God, I love, I love when they just free random ancient Tyrannosaurus dragon monsters. Stir, which promptly kills sure. him. Sure, sure. The man survived the massive fall, all to just be stepped on by this guy. And heads. Let me just remind you, if she would have just killed him while he was sniveling on the floor, this wouldn't have happened. I, I am so on the, on the, the mindset that uh, if this guy, if by letting him live. He will have the opportunity to hurt anyone else. You have a moral obligation to kill him now. Sorry for being so based, but I have incredibly strong moral opinions about things that I definitely shouldn't have. So, my opinion is, if you leaving someone alive will put him in the position that he will cause damage to someone else, it is on you to end the bloodline. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to be so... I, I'm having a, a day and a half right now, okay? YouTube muted my video, and now I want to see fat people burn. Not specifically fat people. I actually like fat people. They tend to be funny and wholesome and cute. But this specific one, this specific fat person. The ancient Tyrannosaurus-like dragon monster, sure. which promptly kills him and heads for- And dies anyway. Like, what did you do, Raftalia? You just, you just- Now you, there's a dragon dinosaur monster to deal with. Now, Fumi. As Naofumi's party confronts the Rex Dragon Rabia released, Melty sees Philo and the monster glow with the same light, deducing how to bait it to a large lake. There they fight the monster, but their attacks have no effect until a massive Philolial Queen Let's appears go. and easily defeats it. <laughs> Yo! Did you see it? It used the Zoro, Zoro music. No effect this. until a massive Philolial oh, Queen nee appears giddy. and easily defeats <laughs> it. <The> <laughs> Let's fucking go. I love fat chickens. Philolial Queen takes a human form, introducing herself as Fatoria, and spirits them to a Philolial Sanctuary in faraway ruins. Yes. Now Fumi asks Fatoria about Philo's true nature, and Fatoria answers Philo's growth is due to a hero raising her, and now Fumi informs her of his story. 
Frustrated by the hero's infighting, Fittori informs Nalfumi about the waves ravaging the entire world, not just Melromark. Wait, did he think that these demons were only attacking this one city? Ain't no way he thought the demons were just attacking this one city the whole time. Vittoria has been protected. What? You mean these demons are a threat to other cities too? Damn. Protecting the other nations alone to fulfill the last wish of the hero who raised her, but knows she will soon perish. She urges yeah, Nalfumi sucks. to make amends with the other heroes, but he refuses. Vittoria explains that if the heroes can't unite, she has no choice but to kill them so four new heroes can be summoned. Unfathomably and unshroudedly based. That might be the most based thing i've heard in the entire show i remember when she made that threat and i was like damn did we just meet best girl like that is so real listen the four nations need to work in harmony and if not then i will murder the four of you so four new heroes come and they can work in harmony i don't care for your petty squabbles i don't care for your hurt feelings that you won't trust them because they don't trust you i don't give a shit you have a job to do, and I will murder the four of you to bring four new people that hopefully can get along better than your sorry asses. Sorry, homie, but you mean very little to me. Just so based. Meanwhile, Ren and Itsuki follow Naofumi's lead to investigate the church, discovering a hidden library. Unaware, Malti is observing them. Sure, sure she is. The next morning, Fatoria takes Melty hostage to coerce Nafumi to make up with the heroes. To test his conviction, she fights Philo with both limited to human form. While outmatched, Philo is able to break Fatoria's magic defense. Satisfied, Fatoria names Philo as her successor, which grants her base stat increases. Fatoria sure. force unlocks many. Let's just make the lollies more powerful. That is exactly how we will defeat the demon lord. Lolial shields for Nalfumi, which she can't use yet. After everyone goes to sleep, she asks Nalfumi to work with the other heroes, who still think him guilty of assault. Vittoria warns Nalfumi that saving the world is far different from saving the people, and the heroes Damn. will eventually have to make that choice later. A true, true. Additionally, that, like, she's actually so right about what she's saying. I think she's the only rational character in the whole show. Every other character has, like, just that, that string of irrationality that leads them around, you know? Like, Spear Hero constantly accusing uh, Naofumi of having slaves when there's an entire slave market thriving, right? Like, she she's, like, the only character that's actually logical. And it's, like, it's such a breath of fresh air when this should just be every character. Victoria notes the heroes are still too weak to defeat the waves properly, and if they don't unite, she'll make good on her promise to kill them. She enhances Naofumi's armor to better resist the negative effects of the raid shield. Based on her actions and behavior, Naofumi deduces a previous shield hero raised Victoria, but she can't remember after living for so long. In Melromark, Ren and Itsuki's parties find a hidden cave, but yes. an attack from above collapses the cave. What? Who could have seen this coming? That's crazy. Who do we know that has been known to attack their own allies? Hmm, hmm I can't think of anyone. Vittoria takes Naofumi and his party to a place near one of the heroes so that he can start reconciling with them. Parting ways, Naofumi's party arrives at an outpost where they meet Moto Yasu brother is just everywhere with whom naofumi attempts to reason with but motoyasu refuses to listen <laughs> just look at that face you have been accused by a person on twitter that i've never met before and i believe them how dare you speak to me accusing naofumi of killing that person has boobs and you do not ren and itsuki as naofumi tries <laughs> man just buys it he just buys everything it's like, oh yeah, Ren and Ituki died in a, in a rock slide. It must have been you! I'll believe that with no evidence. Tries to question him, sure. Malti affirms a church official found evidence against Naofumi. Their fight- Sure, sure. I, I have evidence it was you. Source? My source is I made it the fuck up! It escalates into a full battle between Naofumi and Motoyasu's parties, with Naofumi's side winning despite the severe level gaps. Suddenly, Philo senses impending danger from above, and convinces Naofumi to use multiple shields to defend against a massive ray of light that soon after incinerates everything around them. That's convenient. The attack was sent by the Pope Balm. I love bad guys that they see my- Oh, my attack was blocked. I will now clap slowly and reveal myself as the religious leader, because I will have you know that there is no religious leader in the history of anime that's not evil. It's just- it's another one of those anime tropes 
There is no religious leader in anime that's not just some super villain. Thomas and his followers, revealing he had ordered Ren and Itsuki's deaths as part of his plan to kill the false heroes and the princesses in order to overthrow the monarchy. Yes, my plan was to kill the heroes so that I could uh, become king in a world that's being overrun by demons that the only chance of defeating them is the heroes. It is all part of my epic plan. Pope Balmus then draws a magical sword and prepares to attack both parties. Melty recognizes Pope Balmus wields an ancient weapon that replicates all the four cardinal weapons. That's a super convenient power to have. Hmm, wow. I love when the villains are just, ah, my power is just your power except uh, the evil version. That's my favorite type of character writing. Supposedly lost long ago. Now Fumi and Motoyasu are unable to breach the weapon's defenses as it is powered by hundreds of Balmus's loyalists. Just then, Ren and Itsuki appear to help, explaining they were rescued by Morelia's special forces, the Shadows. They also reveal- The Shadows! Is that a reference to a much better isekai about an overpowered main character? An army, personally led by Morelia, is coming to subdue the church, who refused to surrender. While the heroes join for- Wait, they- Hold up, why'd they go into the pit though? Morelia is coming- just then, Ren and right, Itsuki- They show up, like, on top, right? To they help. have the high ground. They survived, okay? This entire idea of framing Naofumi, that all failed, because they survived. The church had one job, and they failed, okay? All right, cool, 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 cool. Explaining they were rescued- And then they forces. just go into the pit? This against the Pope, Naofumi refuses given the harm they caused, detailing their consequences, lack of coordination, and how he had to rectify them. Naofumi explains they were ignorant of how to become heroes and properly clean up, leading to the church to see them as fakes and plan a coup d'etat. I love how he's- <laughs> The Pope- <laughs> He just gives them a whole speech. For the last- 12 episodes i have been going through every single mission that you have had and every single one of you fucked up so badly that the consequences of what you've done caused everyone to die so now i am going to roast you into oblivion and you are going to listen because we are in a crater surrounded by enemies that are conveniently waiting for me to finish this speech and now that we have finished this speech and you have recognized the fact that you are incompetent bozos you will now realize that i am your true leader and we will work together. And everyone's like, oh man, damn, you guys, so based. He takes advantage of their discussion to fire an attack, which Naofumi blocks. Naofumi equates the other heroes to the Pope, but agrees to work with them only out of his promise to Fatoria. Now the four cardinal heroes stand together, Let's but go. Pope Balmus responds by enclosing the battlefield inside a magical cathedral. The four heroes have no success in breaking through Balmus's cathedral spell, and now Fumi finds his raid shield's curse effect is greatly nullified within the cathedral. Pope Balmus endangers the lives of his followers by siphoning more mana from them to charge a larger attack. You mean like every single villain does ever, right? Like literally all of them? In order to block it, Naofumi takes the risk of releasing the Dragon Soul in his raid shield, donning new Berserker armor and struggling to keep control. Bro, why'd they have to rip off Berserk for the Berserker armor? Come on, man. Control while his rage fuels him, Raftalia, Philo, and Melty snap him out of it. The, the three children, the three children that he has so much love for in his heart. They have snapped him out of his rage. God damn it, children are awesome. Oh, they're all burned by the curse flames. A focus now, Fumi blocks Balmus's attack, and the loss of many of his followers prevents him from quickly regaining mana. With the other three heroes coordinating an attack to break Balmus's defenses, now Fumi charges on Philo, setting Balmus ablaze. However, Balmus uses an advanced counter ability and nearly wins until Queen Marilia's army arrives to support them. Let's go. Using the opportunity, now Fumi uses his blood sacrifice power. No so way! So his berserk armor has a blood sacrifice power? What? That's crazy and totally rip up from Berserk. Severely draining his own blood to power it, to kill Balmus and destroy his replica weapon. As Morelia's army arrests the Pope's followers. Just saying, Morelia's still best girl. I mentioned earlier that Morelia's best girl. Morelia's easily best girl. I, I know that the other chicken lady is awesome and based, but Morelia out here carrying hard. Introduces herself to the heroes and promises to save the dying Nafumi's life. After Naofumi spends three days recovering, Queen Morelia apologizes to Naofumi for all the troubles the three heroes Church, Mine, and Altcray had caused him. And this is where the show honestly reached basically its conclusion with the one tiny detail that is somehow Malty needs to suffer. Aside from that one detail, there is no story anymore in this show. You know, he reconciled with everyone, the world sees that he was misjudged, and then it just has another two seasons somehow. 
claiming that she was absent due to the commotion caused by them summoning all four heroes. As they originally intended to have a hero summoned by a different nation to fight the waves around the world. The next day, she dethrones Altgrey and puts a slave seal on mine to force her to confess all of her crimes. For their transgressions, Morelli removes all of mine and Altgrey's royal privileges and sentences them to death. However, just as they're about to be executed, Naofumi, realizing that mine is truly pleading for her life, interrupts the execution and proposes- Ah, look at that. I am saving your life now. No, I, I, I have to say, I agree. I agree with him. Man was so worth have being merciful. No, no, they shouldn't execute her. She deserved to be almost executed and have that fear in her heart. And that, you know who saves her? You know who saves her? The guy whose life she ruined. Oh, that is the ultimate revenge. The I am so much bigger than you. Was is that both mine and Alt like the big fuck you moment be spared? But having their names officially changed to bitch or whore as her adventuring name and trash respectively, mandating Let's all go. citizens not to address them otherwise. Let's go. And the queen declares that the three heroes church will be abolished and the original religion that worshipped all four heroes will be reinstated. This stupid religion. Okay, anyway. Afterward, Naofumi's party bid farewell to Melty, who decides to remain at the castle as a princess whilst they fight the waves. Well, and now that Malty now was renamed to Bitch Whore, so, oh well. After they leave, Morelli reveals to Melty that she was going to sacrifice herself to appease the public opinion and stop the execution, had Naofumi not intervened on his own. Exiting the city, the S.H.I.E.L.D. party is bid farewell by the Let's Mel Remark citizens. Let's go, and everyone and loves them. This is the conclusion of the show. The fact that anything that passed this point is just, I feel, fan service. Like, I know, obviously, there's still a Demon King and all these hordes and waves, but none of that was really consequential to the emotional plot of this story. Fumi finally accepts his role as the S.H.I.E.L.D. hero. Now, Fumi's party goes to the Dragon Hourglass to receive their class up upgrades, but the ritual fails. Morelli expects- Which is, like, just- uh, Yeah, I, I think- And this is still season one. There's two more seasons after this, if I'm not mistaken. And there's no reason, no reason for any of it, but, but the Demon King, okay. Kilates, Vittoria's blessing is interfering somehow, revealing herself a Filoliol otaku. During a banquet, the four heroes have a private meeting whilst Raftalia fights a drunken bow party member, Maul, for insulting Naofumi, causing a brawl amongst the hero parties. Meanwhile, Melty sure. thwarts Bitch, attempting to poison Raftalia and Philo's food. Oh my god, she's still out here causing mischief. My god, dude. Why is she even allowed in the castle? During the meeting, Morelli informs the heroes of the upcoming special Calmira Archipelago event, where everyone gains bonus experience points. Giving this them is just like a filler. The rest of the show feels like filler. Filler and fan service. The opportunity to level up before the next wave. To help each other, the heroes elaborate on their weapon's hidden functions, including a special weapon copy system. However, they devolve into arguing over the better power leveling method. So now sure Fumi leaves in disgust. The next day, now Fumi copies all of Erhard's shields before visiting Raftalia's abandoned village to pay respect to Rifana's grave. Very As awesome. he ponders rebuilding the village someday, now Fumi briefly encounters a pair of travelers. The next morning, now Fumi yeah, like again, this whole thing, n none of this feels like it matters at all, right? Like after the whole uh, execution scene, the rest of the show just devolves into. I would like to save this village. I am going to defeat that demon. I will be awesome. Boards the ship, headed for- The rest of the show is like world building, right? But it's world building a world that we have no care about at all. The only thing we care about this in this story is the, I guess, the socio-political ramifications of S.H.I.E.L.D. hero being accused, right? That's kind of the whole point. Calmira. However, since the I know it's the last five minutes of this video, but there's there's two more seasons after this. Like you have to realize there are two more seasons. The other heroes took most of the ship's cabins. Now Fumi's party must share a room with the aforementioned pair of. Oh my God! I met you guys five minutes ago at a coincidence. Players. Lark Berg and Therese Alexandrite. Introducing themselves, Lark and Therese think now Fumi's name is an alias, having heard of the despicable Shield hero. Once the heroes arrive at Calmira, Governor Haddenberg escorts now. Whoa, that man looks like a freaking skeleton. Party to the resort inn, while the other hero parties recover from seasickness. Learning a new boosting spell, now Fumi takes his party for XP grinding across the archipelago, fashioning new weapons from monsters for Raptali and Philo. At night, a Let's concerned go. Lark and Therese new find new weapons, new skins, new new Fortnite emotes, 
Guys, did you know that Riftalia is getting a new Fortnite emote in Season 4 of Shield Hero, which is still going on somehow? Now Fumi's party, and take them to a party at a dinner to end oh, the day. After a Tori's dinner pack party? That's totally what I what I want to see in Shield Hero. Patronizes now Fumi for an accessory, he crafts a beautiful item with a rare gem, much to Teresa's jubilation. The following day, co-oping with Lark and Therese to grind XP, Naofumi also learns Therese's magic flames actually heal him when engulfed. By sunset, the duo take their leave, thanking Naofumi for the day and hope they meet again soon. Yeah, As Naofumi's totally party relevant. are relaxing at the beach, Philo discovers an undersea temple. Oh, a beach a episode with a random undersea temple. That's, that's crazy and so relevant to the plot and why people watch this show. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 I hate to be that guy just... <laughs> pooping on things uh, i i pride myself and i i'm telling you what i like about shield hero what i thought was mid about shield hero and after this point the show just feels so pointless peaking naofumi's curiosity to investigate upon arrival naofumi's shield opens the door sure. where a dragon hourglass resides and by linking to it he learns the next wave is due at Calmira in 48 hours. Learning of the wave, Naofumi warns Mirelia. Not that these and she waves ever actually meant anything, you know? The these waves were just kind of the plot device that kept people where they were at different points. None of that was super relevant. Masses a large naval fleet, while Lark and Therese also sail to the waves with the fleet. While the Navy fights these smaller creatures, the four heroes fight the boss monster but they are unable to do much damage to it, and it's Lark and Therese that ultimately kill it. Lark and Therese then attack the heroes, explaining that they're from yet another world besieged by the waves. In order to save their home world, they must kill the four heroes. Lark yep, easily knocks the other three- Which is a totally three random bullshit excuse to have villains. Uh, yeah, well, th there's a multiverse, and the multiverse is also in danger, and the people from the alternate universes need to kill the heroes to save their universes for some reason heroes away, while Therese keeps the fleet at bay, leaving only Naofumi's party to face them. Lark and Therese initially have the upper hand, fending off Raftali and Philo's attacks while managing to partly bypass Naofumi's defenses. Melty then intervenes in the battle, with her presence contributing magical support, helping Naofumi focus on the battle, Naofumi's party soon outsmarts Lark and Therese through clever tactics, resulting in Lark being wounded. But what? A shield? But behind me? Glass suddenly arrives, revealing she's allied with Lark and Therese. Glass is impressed- Well, obviously. She was the boss of the last wave. With Naofumi being stronger since they last met, preparing to battle him again. Naofumi confronts Glass in single combat, where she reveals herself as a hero from Lark's homeworld, the fan hero. Naofumi discovers Glass- and every one of these different worlds also has four heroes, and they also have a random weapon. Oh, Tizai, the fan hero from this other universe. Yes, yes, because you thought a shield hero was cringe. <laughs> you fool. You absolute buffoon. It was I all along, the fan hero. Glass is weak against his soul. To say that the show fell off after the multi-execution scene is under... It's literally undercutting how much the show fell off. Under shield, but hesitates unwilling to kill her since he realizes she is trying to protect her own world. Raftalia then intervenes, reminding Naofumi that there are many people in this world that he wants to protect. I want to protect the people in my world, but I also don't want to ruin your world, so I, I realize that maybe we should just kind of ignore each other? Meanwhile, Morelia finds Lesia Ivy Red, a bow party novice, and has her launch liquor barrels at glass. Glass is quickly intoxicated by the powerful alcohol, forcing Lark and Therese to help her withdraw as- Wait, they just shot a barrel of liquor at her and she got drunk by hitting the- That's fucking awesome, bro. Dude, I can't believe Shield Hero became Boruto after the execution scene. The wave's time limit runs out. Returning to Kalmira, Naofumi ponders the revelation of other worlds fighting the waves, and Fatoria's words. He also recruits Lesia into his party, who attempted to commit suicide by drowning after she is kicked out of Itsuki's party due oh. to a false accusation against her. Mm, where have we heard that exact plot before? Interesting. Wow, because of Apollo. No way, that's crazy. Sorry. Sailing back to the mainland, Naofumi takes up Morelia's reward, Lordship of Sayet, with people Naofumi trusts to rebuild it. Raftalia expresses her feeling that this is insurance should he die or go home. Though Naofumi reveals it's his new beginning with them. As Naofumi Aww. and Raftali oversee her village rebuilding, Aww. the other heroes resolve to become stronger than Naofumi, 
Meanwhile, Belokis gains a new secret patron. Also, if you look pretty closely while now Fumi and Raftali are on the rooftop, you can see them kiss. I thought that was adorable. Anyway. What? <laughs> Random? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, it's interesting. Master-slave relationship between an adult and a child. Very adorable. Love that. Cute, cute. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, Shield Hero is an okay show. I am not going to lie to you when I say that. I thought Shield Hero is fine. I, I think it's an average isekai with the... I guess, social elements of it being elevating it to slightly above average. I do think that the show is as good as dead once the execution scene ends. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.